In our video today, I want to give you an in-depth review of the Juki TL2010Q. This is the machine that you see me using in our videos most of the time. I really like this machine for what I use it for, but we want to find out if it's going to be the right machine for you. So we're going to give you an, a complete overview of the machine. This is not a review from a shop or a dealership, and it's not sponsored in any way. This is what I use to sew most of my things, and I wanted to share, share that with you. These are the things we're going to go over. Uh, they will be time stamped in the description below, so you can skip around and see what interests you, or you can watch the video all the way through. I want to show you a, uh, a brief overview of the whole machine, how it's designed, who, who builds it. Juki builds it, then we want to go over the performance. How, how does it hold up? Is it a long lasting machine? Then we're going to go over the controls, features, how you use it, how you thread it, uh, the bells and whistles that it has and, do and doesn't have. Then we're going to go over the price and uh, the value. Are you going to get your money's worth if you buy this machine? Um, personally, I think you will, but we'll go over that and see. Then there are the pros and the cons. Those are things that will help you make a decision on whether it's the right machine for you and my personal experience. And then we'll sum it all up at the end. So let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome to Pieces of the Past. My name is Deborah. I have a passion for fiber arts and creating new things from old. Join me on my journey as I explore the endless possibilities the tools and the techniques to create new pieces of the past. Okay, so let's start with an overview. This is a semi-industrial, mid-level, single needle, these are all very important things, um, straight stitch only machine. Uh, it is not electronic, doesn't have any uh, bells and whistles like buttons that you push to change stitches and things like that. Uh, it is strictly mechanical. So being semi-industrial uh, means that it's not uh, a, a machine that you would buy maybe as your first machine uh, that has all the different like a zigzag stitch and uh, decorative stitches and all that kind of thing. Um, this does only one stitch. It does a straight stitch. It makes You can make it longer and shorter but you can't make it go back and forth. So uh, this was this machine was manufactured for quilting primarily. That's why there's a Q on the end of the of the name. It can be used on a table like you see here for quilting. So you would put your quilt down and move it around, or you can put it on a rail frame system uh, to make it more like a long arm. It's called a mid arm, but it has a deep throat on it, so you can deeper than most sewing machines. So you can use it in that way to do free motion quilting. It can also be used for stitching through uh, multiple layers of things like denim, um, leather. So it's really good for bag making and uh, leather working applications. So that's that's the benefits of having this machine. It's, it's a workhorse. It, it really works hard at what it does and it does it really well. It's heavy duty. It's made of cast iron aluminum. It has a built-in carrying handle right here. So if you can lift 38 pounds, you can carry it. What does it come with? I'll show you. It comes with um, the accessories, as most machines do, uh, bobbins, things like that, a pack of needles. And then it also comes with um, a zipper foot, like this, a zipper foot, a quarter inch foot, because this was made for quilting primarily, you have a quarter inch foot. Um, I don't use that, but we'll go over that later as to what I use for, for, for quilting on this machine. Um, then it comes with this foot, and this is really important. This is a free motion foot. This is what you would use to uh, put the quilt in your machine here and move it around. Uh, this is gonna allow you to move it around instead of keeping it going straight through the machine. And then it comes with a walking foot. Now this one does let you guide it straight through the machine. And this is also for the quilting part. Uh, it comes with the power cord, of course, the foot pedal. The, it comes with a knee lifter, which is really nice to lift and lower the presser foot uh, without using your hands. 
and it comes with this table here, this extension table. I can't get it off right now, but you'll see it later. Uh, that's really nice because it gives you a big space to work. Okay, so the design and the build of this machine, it's made by Juki. Juki Corporation is a Japanese manufacturer of sewing machines. The, the brand has been operating since 1938. It's headquartered in Tokyo, has manufacturing facilities in Japan, China, and Vietnam. They primarily manufactured industrial machines, uh, which, may, which is why this one is such a nice, uh, strong working, hard working machine. Uh, they, made, they made the industrial machines for the textile industry uh, until the 70s. And then this machine, the uh, TL2010Q, was made for home sewing or light industrial sewing uh, in 2011. And it's still being manufactured today. You can buy one brand new. They are not super cheap, but they're well worth you know what you pay for them. The reason they held their market value is because of the, the applications that this machine uh, does. It doesn't do all kinds of things like your general home sewing machine. It does specific things and it does them very well. Okay, before we get into the uh, stitching and the actual features of the machine itself and how to thread it and all of that, um, I wanna tell you a few more things about the design and the build and the performance of this machine. Um, one of the things that I really like about this machine is that it's made by Juki and Juki because they make industrial machines they basically took their knowledge and put it down into a consumer machine instead of trying to make a consumer machine stronger or uh, be able to sew through fabrics uh, thick fabrics things like that they uh, already know how to do that because they make industrial machines so it's taking a stronger machine and the knowledge and putting it into a very small package for the consumer. And I really like that because it, you can see that in the details. Uh, this machine is made of cast aluminum. It's not plastic. Uh, it is uh, about 38 pounds. The stitches per minute is where you're really gonna see the, the difference in this compared to um, a, uh, a home machine. Uh, this one does 200 to 1500 stitches per minute, which is very slow. You can go really slow and detailed or very fast, very, very fast. Uh, a normal home sewing machine does uh, 650 to 1000. So they've gone on both ends of that scale. They've gone lower and they've gone higher with this machine, 200 to 1500. It is mechanical. This machine is completely mechanical. It has two uh, boards up here that are electronic and those control things like the lights and stuff but other than that it's completely mechanical it has gears and, and everything so uh, it's it's easier to maintain and it's much easier um, to troubleshoot if you have an issue than the um, electronic machines where if you push a button and it's not doing what you want it to do it's computerized you you have no choice but to take it to the dealer because you can't fix that yourself or at least I can't anyway um, this machine will then also stitch through silk fabrics and all the way up to thicknesses of denim and I'll show you those when we get into the actual stitching um, it will stitch through several layers of denim which is nice um, leather workers use it but but um, for light leather you wouldn't want to use it for really really thick like cowhide leather that kind of thing uh, but that that's really the performance of it is excellent uh, for what it does Okay, so now let's get into the fun part. We are going to look at the Controls and the features on this machine. We're going to actually get into it and see see what it's all about um, this machine Is used uh, as a dedicated machine for straight stitching only so I wouldn't say that it's not a beginner machine. I, I think that a beginner could certainly use this machine no problem. In fact, it's a, it's a great beginner machine because it's very simple. It only has one, one stitch straight. Uh, there's no zigzag, there's no embroidery, there's no, none of that stuff built in, okay? So if you want to stitch 
quilts and you know that, then this would be a good be beginner machine for you. Uh, if you want to do decorative stuff where you need embroidery stitches and things like that, this would definitely not be the machine to start with for you. Uh, most people start with a machine that has uh, all those stitches on it so they can figure out how to use a sewing machine to begin with and then uh, how to uh, what what they're interested in making when they sew. Uh, some people like to make um, decorative things, some people like to make bags, you know, it, it just depends and you'll figure out what you like to make and go from there. This machine I use 98% of the time because I'm always sewing something straight I'm sewing two things together, sewing straight. This is the machine I go to. I do have another machine uh, back there that will do my zigzags and buttonholes and things like that for when I need it, but I use it the other 2% of the time. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this machine. It only does the straight, straight stitches. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the start at the top here. We have dual thread spools here, which I was kind of confused at because you can't do a double needle in this machine. You can only do a single needle. Uh, there's only one little hole that the needle goes down in. You cannot do a, a twin needle. So I was kind of confused as to why there was two spools up here. But uh, the reason there is, I think, is because you can keep one for winding your bobbins so that you don't have to unthread your machine. So if you have two spools of the same color, you can put one here and use it to wind your bobbin and use the other one for your sewing and not have to, to unthread and rethread. So then we have going from here, we come down. Uh, here is the uh, threading. I will show you that in a little bit when we get to the actual sewing. Um, and then we have dual tension knobs. And honestly, I really don't use this top one very much at all. Uh, because I sew mainly cotton, so I just leave it where it is. Uh, but it is adjustable for fine-tuning your tension. This is your main tension knob, which you know from any other sewing machine, same as any other one. Uh, then we go down to, uh, we thread the machine and everything. So up here, we have the uh, pressure foot pressure knob. Okay, say that fast. This controls the pressure that the foot puts on the fabric. If you tighten it down, there's a little there's a little dial uh, indicator here. You tighten this just like you would a screw. It puts more pressure on your fabrics to pull them through. So a lot of times you don't want that much pressure on them. If you're sewing something thick, you probably want a little less. So you would unscrew it and you can watch the little marker move up and down to tell you where the pressure is on your pressure foot. Pressure foot. Okay. So Going down from there, there is the needle uh, threader. It's built in. I will say because, because Juki makes industrial machines, they didn't put a lot of thought into this needle threader, so it's not the greatest. Um, but I will talk about that later as well. Uh, it's, it's just this little mechanism right here. Uh, and then from that, you have your needle up and down button, which is over here. You push it, it goes down push it goes up. That's a toggle back and forth. You also have your thread cutter which is right here. I will also tell you that a really nifty feature about this machine and most of Juki's machines I think have the presser foot uh, that you step on, the gas pedal. If you push back with your heel that's also a thread cutter. So you can never touch this button. You can just cut your threads uh, by using your foot, which is awesome. This is your stitch length. I keep mine set around two for regular stitching, about three or so for top stitching, and, and then above for basting. It goes all the way up, all the way down. I'll put it back on two, okay. We have the feed dogs up and down right here. So if you're going to do free motion quilting with this machine, uh, you're gonna wanna put your feed dogs down like that. And if you're going to do regular sewing, you put them back up. That's super easy. Uh, the throat depth on this, speaking of free motion quilting, the throat depth is eight and a half inches. Uh, most of your domestic machines are about six 
inches, six to seven. So you get a little bit more space in here and that's how they're marketing it for quilters so that you can quilt, you know, you have this extra space to shove your quilt through here, through the throat. Uh, it has the uh, knee lifter gadget right here, which I don't know what I would do without because I absolutely love it. It allows you to lift the presser foot as you go. So if you're stitching and let's say you're chain stitching, you're stitching a whole bunch of things one after another, after another, you just lift, put it in there, stitch, lift, put it in there, stitch and so forth. And you just keep going. So the knee lifter is awesome. Works great. Uh, it also came with the extension table, which is really nice because most of the domestic machines today, you have to, if you want a bigger table area for say quilting, you have to purchase it separately. So that was really nice that it came with this big table. It's a big table. Um, let's see what else. The feet I told you about already, the feet that it came with. Now I will show you this foot right here is, let me see, put it, put it over here. Um, this would be your straight quilting foot. It's called a walking foot and it attaches down here where your, where your foot goes and it pulls, it's got these teeth on it right here, just like your feed dogs. And basically what it is, is you're putting feed dogs on the top of your fabric. So it works with your feed dogs on the bottom to pull your quilt layers through, uh, straight through at the same time. So you don't get this um, one, one, the bottom one's going through and the top one's getting stuck and it, it just shifts, right? So this keeps it from getting shifted. Now this is only for doing the straight line quilting, okay? And then you've got the free motion foot which is the one with the hole in it, the one with the hole in it, right? That uh, where it bounces up and down and you, when your feed dogs are lowered, you would move the, the fabric around to quilt. I don't do a lot of that with this machine, um, but that's what that foot is for right there. Okay. So the other feet that it comes with, it comes with the zipper foot, which if you're familiar with any sewing machines at all, you know what that is is so that you can sew on the side of the zipper, right? Otherwise it's very difficult to get the zipper under the foot, a regular foot. And then it comes with the uh, quarter inch foot because they're marketing this as a quilting, quilting machine. Uh, they want to make sure you have the quarter inch foot for doing your piecing and, and whatnot. Um, I use Teflon feet that I purchased separately. And I will put that link in the description below. I really, really like these. Um, they are, uh, they glide so things don't get stuck. And I make, I make bags and things and sometimes I'm using vinyl and vinyl gets kind of stuck on these metal parts. So I replaced my pressure foot with, uh, with the uh, nylon one. Okay, so now we're going to move on to sewing uh, with the machine. Let's see, let's start with bobbin winding. You want to use, when you're, let me pull these over here. You want to use the metal bobbin. It comes with this metal bobbin. It's called an L series bobbin. And you want to use the metal one. Do not try to use the plastic one. These are for your, uh, domestic um, electronic type machines that drop in the bobbin from the top. So you're not going to want to use those in this machine. You only want to use these metal ones. They are the same size, but they don't work right. Okay. So bobbin winding, you would bring your thread up through the thread guide. And then you come around this screw right here on the top. Okay. And then with my bobbin. Now I have seen some people come in in this hole back here and then go around the screw. I don't do that. Uh, but I think that's preference. Okay. So then you want to put the, sorry, I did that without even thinking. You want to put the thread through the center and up through the hole of the bobbin. Right? 
and then you're going to hold on to that tail of that thread. You're going to set the bobbin on the, on the post and you're going to just kind of spin it a little bit clockwise until it sits down on the um, notch and you'll feel it. It'll just uh, spin around and it'll drop down and then you want to push this lever in and hold on to your thread and start your with your presser foot uh, yeah with your gas pedal you want to start it going now the needle will go down one time before it starts winding and then it will wind and the needle won't go down anymore okay so once you get it up there you want to cut that off and then you can just go now one thing I forgot to mention on the um, features of it here is your speed control so you have a rabbit at the top. I love how they did this. They have the rabbit at the top and the tortoise at the bottom. So this is the tortoise and the hare. I think that's hilarious. Um, the rabbit is probably where I would keep it for bobbin winding all the time because it's very fast. Watch. and it'll stop on its own, just like that. So it won't go anymore. So you pop this open, take this off, and cut your thread. I don't have my scissors with me, so I'm just breaking it. Okay, and so then your um, thread for your bobbin can just stay like that. So the next time you wanna wind a bobbin, you just use that spool. And when you wanna sew, this one stays threaded. All right, so threading the machine. Get this undone. Oh, goodness. All right. So, threading the machine. Here we go. Put the spool on there. Come up over the thread guide here. Now, you're going to want to go into these three holes, there are various ways to do this. I go into all three from the top, one, two, three. A lot of people skip the middle hole. You can do that. Even in the manual, it says that you can do that. Um, I just do it this way because I've always done it this way. So you're gonna go through all, whoop, all three holes. You're gonna go around this first tension guide. Make sure you get it between the two plates and then you're gonna go between these two tension plates down here on your tension knob. I thread my machine with my presser foot up and then when I go to do my needle threading, I put the presser foot down. So once you've gone around this tension control, you wanna grab that little spring there, come back down to this hook right here, go up into this little clip Grab the arm, go back down through that clip, go into this little clip here, this guide. There's another guide right above the needle. And this is where I would lower my presser foot. I'll do that with my knee. All right, and this is the, bob this is the needle threader. You push it down, go around it in the back, and it pulls the thread out for you through the needle. I will tell you that this works, this needle threader works for six months to five years, whatever. At some point, it's going to die. And this little part right here is about $16 to replace. So once this stops working, you can either replace that, which is very simple, or you can just thread it by hand or get a needle threader. Uh, they also, I believe, include this needle threader in the package so that when that one fails eventually, this one will work. So that is probably my one pet peeve about this machine. Okay, so let's go to um, putting the bobbin in. All right. So 
So this is a side loading bobbin, not a drop in from the front, like you'll see in the electronic machines. Okay, here's the bobbin we just wound. You wanna put the bobbin into this machine going clockwise. So, see, this in this camera, maybe. Okay, clockwise, see how it's turning? Into the little slot, go back, pop it into that little hole there. Okay, now there are two ways to load this bobbin into here. You want to always make sure that the um, notch is open at the top, okay? And you want to put it in on that post that's in there. And you can either leave this little lever closed and put it on the post and push it till it snaps, which is what you do when you have an industrial machine. Or you can pull this lever out and use it as a little handle to put it on the post. Now, this little handle tends to make it drop like that. <laughs> See, it just drops. So, but the one good thing about the little handle is that it holds the bobbin in place. Um, so if you do it this way, if you leave that closed and you just get it in there on that post, then you can push it and you'll hear it click. Okay, so, and then it's loaded. So then we'll close this and they got this handy little door on this table too. All right, and then we're going to go down with the, with the needle and go back up, pull that bobbin thread up. And there she is, she's threaded. Okay, now on this tension knob, I will mention um, before we start sewing, that you want to always have your foot down when you're setting your tension on this thing because it moves when you raise the, see how that moved? I don't know if you could see it in the camera, but it actually pushes it out when you raise the presser foot. And the reason is because it's releasing the tension on this thread right here. So you're not gonna get a proper tension adjustment by dialing that in when this is up. You always wanna have this down and then dial it in, okay? All right, so let's look at the stitches. Okay. Now you can back stitch by pushing this lever down. You have to hold it while you're stitching. All right, and then you can go forward. Okay, and I just wanna stitch a little bit. Oh, my tension's off. So, go back this way. A little bit more. Ah, that's better. And then to th cut the thread, you either push this button or you push on the back of the presser foot. Or the gas pedal. Here is, there's what the stitches look like. I don't know if this is the best camera to show that. You can see where, you can see the little black dots maybe in the camera. That's where my tension was off. But the stitches are actually quite nice. All right, so then let's show you the speed. So this is the tortoise. Here we go. Okay. I have it floored all the way down, and that's what it's that's as fast as it's going. Okay. Now I will put it all the way up to the rabbit. There you go. And you've got anything in between those two. You don't you can control the speed with your foot. Like, I have it on rabbit right now, but I can, I can do the tortoise speed just by using my foot, right? Or faster, or slower, okay. And I can cut it with my foot. I can do everything like that with my foot. Isn't that awesome? All right. So then, ah, uh, let's see what else. Okay, so when you're doing the, um, Free motion, what you would do is you'd put on 
this foot, all right? And then you would take your sandwich. I'm not gonna put that foot on because I have a different contraption on here for my foot already. Um, but you would put this sandwich under here and this foot sits here and, you know, under here. And you would move your quilt around to do your quilting while, pr while pressing on the gas pedal to make it go, okay? So you can also use this machine on rails for uh, free motion quilting, which is what I did with it. I put it on the rail system and then I used the handles to guide it around, guide the machine around on the fabric instead of guiding the fabric around in the machine. Uh, it works great for that. And there is a stitch regulator which will regulate your stitches uh, that works really well with this machine. It's kind of pricey, but if you don't have the money to buy an actual long arm machine, this would be the way to go, definitely, if you want to qu make quilts. So there's that, and I showed you the straight seams. Now I want to show you, uh, let's do the denim test. This is always fun. Okay, so here's two pieces of denim. Okay, here we go. Okay, like butter. Let's do four. All right. Let's try six. Seems to be okay with six. All right. Now, if I break a needle, this is going to be pretty funny. All right. Okay. Okay, needless to say, it will stitch through, what is that, eight? So don't put your finger under this thing. It will stitch through your finger easy. Okay, but there you go. It's stitched through all these layers. Isn't that amazing? And I've got I've got ten here, but I'm, I don't know. <laughs> we'll try it. Give it a shot. Oh gosh, ten barely fits under there. Put the needle down. See what happens. Okay, I don't usually stitch ten layers of denim, but why not? Ah, broke the needle. <laughs> Okay, well, there ends that test. So I would not stitch more than 10, no more than eight. Okay. So, I'll change the needle. So 10 layers of did them together anyway. But okay, so changed in the needle. Well, I might as well show this. Um, there. Okay. You want to take the needle and put it in the hole here. Bring it straight up into the holder there like that. And till it hits the top and just hold it in place. Now the flat side of the needle is against the screw to the right. So then you want to screw that screw in with your hand and then with the, with the screwdriver. Okay. Oops, hold on. See, needle threader's not working now. Ooh. When you're stitching with this machine, this handy little nifty little feature, 
is you can stitch forward, okay? And you know you can stitch backward by pushing the lever down, right? Well, you can also stitch forward one stitch at a time using the up and down. And you can also stitch backward using the up and down. So if you are stitching something like uh, your edge stitching or top stitching something and you get really close to that corner where you need to pivot and stitch down the other side or something like that, you can use that as a very, this up and down needle and the back and forth lever to get it right in the spot where you want the needle to go down so you can pivot. So in that case, I would pivot, you know, and then stitch. And oops, I want to go backwards, so I go like this. I should have stopped there, so forth. So that's how that works. I think that's pretty cool. Let's talk about price and value. What is this machine going to cost you today, and is it going to be worth it? This machine is a straight stitch only machine. So you have to only compare it to straight stitch machine, straight stitch. That's hard to say straight stitch machines. This machine today is going for about $9.99 new and it's about $6.50 used if you could find one. You can use this machine for your free motion quilting. That's what they market this machine for. You can also put it on rails. So on the rail system, it's called a grace frame. Grace, G-R-A-C-E. On the grace frame, the frame is gonna cost you another $8.99 if you're interested in free motion quilting going that route. So you're looking at the big chunk. And then your, your regulator, which you have to have a, a stitch regulator to uh, slow down and speed up as you move, because you're not gonna always move at exactly the same speed. So it's gonna control that for you. So that's another uh, 689, I think, right now. So the whole mid-arm setup for this machine, putting it on rails and having the regulator to regulate your stitches, it runs about $2,500. Now, if you're, I'm only talking to the quilting people right now, if you're interested in quilting. Um, if you're interested in, in doing that and you don't, you're looking at long arm machines, okay? This is going to be a mid arm setup. If you're looking at long arm machines, it's going to be at least twice that, about 5,000 for the low end, the very, very low end uh, long arm. So this was what I chose to do when I wanted to get into quilting my own quilts, you know, not sending them out to be quilted or trying to shove them under my home machine to try to get them quilted. That This is the way that I went. I went with a mid-arm setup where I could move the machine around and, and it really worked well uh, until I had the opportunity to purchase a used longer arm machine, which the arm meaning the depth here and the um, uh, throat, the throat depth. This one, of course, is about an eight, eight and a half, I think I said. Uh, the long arm machines are around 16 inches deep, so you can quilt more area. So that's the difference. So I wanted this for quilting for that purpose, so that's what I got it for. Um, it also can be used for, to stitch through a lot of layers. So you can use it for stitching through leather and denim if you have the right needle you saw earlier where I broke the needle at 10 layers I think so I didn't have the right I didn't have a denim needle on there uh, you can stitch through a lot of layers so it's it, it's used for both this machine okay so let's look at the two machines that I picked out to compare it to I looked for straight stitch only machines not any zigzag nothing like that okay so we have first the brother PQ 1500 SL. This machine, the things that it has in common with this machine right here, the Juki, uh, is it's a straight stitch only. It's mechanical. Okay, there's no buttons that you push to tell it to do a different stitch or anything like that. It's also 1500 stitches per minute, which is nice. That's what this one goes up to. So it's, it's a very fast machine, the brother machine is. 
Um, it may work with the Sure Stitch for the mid-arm application. Uh, I don't know for sure. They have listed on the Sure Stitch site, which the link is in the description below, uh, that it will work with the PQ1500S, not it, it doesn't say SL, but I'm thinking that's maybe an older machine and it will work with the SL. I, don't, I really don't know. I know the Sure Stitch works with this machine. And the throat depth on it does appear to be about the same as this machine. So that's the things that it has in common, this machine with the brother. Okay. The things that are not the same. And this is where you get the value for what you're paying. All right. The, the brother costs about 647 new so it's it's considerably less new it's about two three hundred dollars less brand new but it's a plastic this is cast aluminum so you're losing out on that of course if you're just going to leave it sitting in one place permanently it may not matter i don't know but i wanted the sturdy industrial it's not going to break machine okay it has no speed control lever. This little lever here that goes from tortoise to, to hare, you can't, you don't have that on that one. Uh, on the brother, it's only controlled, your speed is only controlled by your foot pedal. Um, it has a, a weird thing here on the side where it's got these colored markers and it's a feed dog. You know, the feed dogs are what feeds the material through feed dog adjustment where you can make the feed dogs taller and or shorter or not at all for, for free motion quilting it would be not at all um that's odd i don't know why you would do that most machines have this lever and you just they're either up or they're down so i'm not real sure about that i haven't reviewed it haven't gotten a hands-on look at it so that's kind of odd to me to have those there but that it does it uh, does not have, it has a thread cutter on it, the brother does, but not on the foot pedal. This one has it on the foot pedal and up here as a button. So that is nice. I really like the one on the foot pedal because I can keep going with my hands and, and, and not have to think about it. Uh, it does have the knee lifter, same, same thing. So those are the, the similarities and the differences between this and the, the other straight stitch quilting machine okay then I compared this machine to a straight stitch thick sewing thick sewing machine okay let's just put it that way uh, a machine that you can stitch a lot of layers through but it's definitely not a quilting machine okay that machine is called a Sailrite LSZ walking foot machine and it does only straight stitches, but it has basically a walking foot on the top, feed dogs on the top, right, on the foot. And so it feeds your uh, fabrics through at the same time. So you can stitch leather, you can stitch through a lot of thicknesses of things. And it's made originally for the sail, sailboats, you know, sailing to stitch through thick sails and things like that. Okay, so it's a really heavy duty machine, which this is too. So that's the comparison between those two. Uh, the things that it has in common with this machine, it's a straight stitch only. It's mechanical, just like this machine, no buttons. Uh, and it is an all metal casing. It's cast aluminum, like this one. And it'll sew through layers just like this one with ease. The problem with that, with the sail right, is that you don't get the quilting part of it. You don't get the free motion, any of that. If you're not interested in that, that's fine. The price is $10.99, um, $1,099. So you have to be sure that you're wanting to do that kind of sewing and no quilting on that particular machine if you buy that machine. It's a dedicated machine to what you want to do with it. The uh, things that are not the same with the Sailrite. The Sailrite only goes up to 550 stitches per minute. This one goes to 1500. So this one will stitch very, very fast. Uh, that one goes nice, slow and steady through a lot of thicknesses. It is not for free motion. I said that already. Uh, the walking foot is permanent on it. Uh, you can take off the foot 
on that machine, but you can only replace it with another walking foot of a different size or shape or whatever. It's still going to move. The, this bar right here where the foot is moves and it, and it pulls your fabric through on that machine. So if you're interested in quilting, that's definitely not the machine to go with at all. Okay, uh, It has a much more shallow throat depth. Again, not for quilting. It's seven inches deep. This one is eight and a half. Uh, no speed control. Again, only on the pedal. Nothing up here to control the speed. And there's no knee lifter on that machine either. So on this machine and the brother, you get the knee lifter. So by telling you about the two different other machines, what I'm trying to show you is that uh, this is kind of like a combination of those two where you can use it to sew through thick fabrics and, and layers and you can also use it for free motion quilting either on the table or on a frame. So this is kind of a middle of the road and it's also a middle of the road as far as price. Um, it's heavy duty and so I, in my opinion I think that you get what you pay for in this machine. And, so that's the value for the price. So let's go through the pros and cons, okay, of this machine only. You get the, like I said, you get both the free motion ability and the th thick layers. Uh, you can put it on the grace frame for, for the free motion, which makes it even better. Uh, the quality of the machine, there's, there's no... Uh, there's no buttons to push in that you would be like if you wanted to do a zigzag let's say and you push it and it electronically magically moves the foot over or whatever uh, sometimes most of the time those buttons give out okay and something goes weird with the with the motherboard inside you know the computerized the more computerized you get the more things that can go wrong with it and the less likely you are Going to be able to fix it. On this machine, I can dismantle this machine almost completely and put it all back together and I oil it like it's supposed to be oiled and it just runs. It, it's, it's, it just does what it's supposed to do. Um, the, the more uh, computerized machines that I have, if they fail, I have to take them to the dealer to get them fixed or looked at because I have no idea what, what would be wrong with them. Uh, another pro to this one is it's portable. Like, like I said, it has the handle. It, uh, it has the built-in thread cutter both here and on the foot pedal. It has the speed control lever, right? And it can be used with a sure stitch. So those are the pros. The cons, and there are a couple. Uh, the main problem I have with this machine, and it's such a tiny thing, but it's really annoying and it's across the board. And even in the Janome that I told you about, or not the Janome, the Brother I told you about a minute ago, um, it's the same problem with that machine. This automatic threader, it fails eventually. First of all, it's hard to figure out how to use it. And once you figure out how to use it, okay, great, you've, you've figured that out, it's wonderful, it works great. And then all of a sudden one day, the little wire stops going through the needle and it will not work. And so this little part you can replace. It's super simple to pop off of here and, and replace it. It's just this little guy right here. But it's 16 bucks every time you do. And every time you do, it's going to fail eventually as well. So that would be my one pet peeve with this machine is the needle threader. Uh, I, I basically threaded my needles by hand, just sticking the thread through, you know, for years, so you get used to this little needle threader and then when it quits working, it's really annoying. So eventually I just take them off and say, forget it, and just keep threading it the normal way, you know? Uh, you can also use a, a different threader to, to thread it if you need to, if you can't see it or whatever. <clears throat> so that's, a, that's, a, that's probably my main issue with this machine. My second issue would be the weight. It is heavier. Uh, let's say then then the brother machine, but not by much and uh, I'll trade the the metal machine over the plastic 
for uh, for the weight problem is it's not a problem. Um, I can easily lift this and take it take it somewhere. My personal experience with this machine, I use this machine, and you either have seen. I don't know if I put the video in yet, but I will now. If not, uh, I used this machine as a mid-arm machine for quilting. That's what I got it for originally, uh, and it was really great because I could use it to quilt through my quilts and then take them off the frame and and bind them, and they were done. I didn't have to pay anybody to do that for me. Um, you can also get these boards that you put down on the frame that you can use a, a stylus and it uh, it goes back and forth so you don't have to actually uh, uh, freehand the designs because I'm a terrible drawer so I just use the boards you know and you'll see that in the little short clip uh, so that worked really well for a while and then I, I started using it just as my sewing machine when I got my long arm and I use it probably 98% of the time for all of my sewing stuff because all of my sewing is straight stitching. Uh, I moved on into bag making and making uh, toys for kids, that kind of thing. Uh, oh boy, during COVID, the masks, I made over 300 and something masks with this machine. Uh, these are, these. this is a sample of what I do as far as bags go, right? And you can stitch through all these layers and stitch on zippers, everything with this machine. So you don't need anything super fancy machine-wise. Uh, you can just, you know, stitch these. So that's what I use it for mostly now. Uh, occasionally I need to do a buttonhole or a zigzag stitch for applique or something like that. And I'll go to one of my other machines that's electronic and, and it, it does that for me. As I said in the beginning of the video, if I started to sew and didn't know anything about sewing, I would get a lower end, cheaper uh, machine that had more stitches on it. You know, like a 14 stitch machine or something like that. And where I could turn the dials and do a, a zigzag or a buttonhole or things like that. Uh, skip the machines that do the embroidery uh, additional because you won't ever use it. <laughs> but that's just my opinion um but yeah and then i would if if you find that what you're making is just straight stitch stuff then you might look at investing in one of these because it will last you forever i hope you enjoyed the video and uh if if you uh need to know anything about the stuff that i've shown that's maybe not uh, there's a link to the machine in the description, but there's also a link to like the presser feet and the quick change uh, for the presser feet and stuff like that down below in the, in the description. So you can click on any of those links. Um, and if you have any comments or questions about it, if, if there's something that I didn't cover or I skipped over, just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I enjoy seeing those comments. They're pretty awesome. Uh, until next time. Uh, if you haven't clicked the button to subscribe, please do. And I will see you on the next video. See you later.